I started reading about these ancient marine reptiles. And you know, everyone knows about dinosaurs, but very few people realize that in the oceans at the same time were these incredible reptiles, uh, many of them just as large as the dinosaurs, and every bit of as ferocious, if not much more ferocious, because they were all predators, unlike the dinos dinosaurs, some of which were grazers or whatever. But I started thinking, you know, why aren't these animals on the radar? So many kids like dinosaurs, you would think they would really love these things too. And so I started, uh, I wrote up a proposal, sent it to one publisher, it got rejected. I had an editor at Houghton Mifflin who was really interested in it, but then she left and went to Charlesbridge Publishing. But she called me up when she got there and she said, Sneed, I still want to do this book. And so I started reaching researching about these ancient marine reptiles, which included things like uh, ichthyosaurs, which looked like dolphins, but they were reptiles. A great example of convergent evolution. You know, they had this, they were built for speed because they had to pursue squid and other high speed prey. And, you know, beautiful example of evolution where it can take two totally different groups of, ma of animals, mammals and reptiles. So I, I looked into those and these, these animals with kind of squat little bodies and really long necks called elasmosaurs, or, which are a kind of plesiosaur. And what else happened while I was researching the book is I started getting into the stories of their discoveries. And it turns out these ancient marine reptiles or sea dragons were much more popular and had been discovered before dinosaurs. So back in the early 1800s, everyone was crazy about these ancient marine reptiles. And then when dinosaurs came along, bloop, they just fell off the map, basically. And so you learn a, a lot of these interesting stories about the early scientists who were studying these things. One woman was named Mary Ann Manning, and she was just an amazing fossil hunter. She discovered the first uh, plesiosaur in England. She discovered the first pterodactyl fossil. Um, and just really advanced scientists, uh, science very far. In America, there were two scientists who were constantly competing who could make the best find of these giant marine reptiles. And it, there's a funny story there. One of them discovered this giant plesiosaur, um, an elasmosaur with the long necks. And uh, he was so anxious to get it on display at the Philadelphia Museum of Natural History that he assembled it all and he put the head on the tip of the tail by mistake. Well, who do you think discovered this? Well, his arch rival who walked into the door one day and he's looking at this thing, he said, beautiful find, but you know, why did you put the head at the tail? And so once word got out, you know, his credibility was just shot <laughs> forever after that. So it was fun um, to write about this natural history of these animals, but also about the process of discovery and the many interesting little stories that you find out about them.